would like to see Texas history. I don't know whether any of the schools are teaching Texas history anymore. That's where I get all of your your patriotism right up of the Davy Crockett's and all the ones at Alamo and all of that. Uh, I, you, uh, when when you Bill Ames is going around speaking about his book right now, and he wrote about all of the things, how the process went, and how he was able to get all of the good exceptionalism into the books and the Texas history and making it accurate factually and you know and making it accurate and not politically correct I mean it was it was a struggle down there with the liberals okay but because of the, uh, him and the conservatives on our board we were able to prevail you all but that's why it's important that we have conservatives on the board to make sure that we keep our curriculum uh, pure and accurate and good, okay, and well balanced, okay. And all of this conservative activity started under the leadership of Dr. Don McElroy. Prior to then, the liberals had free reign. I have Dr. Don McElroy's um, endorsement, as well as Pastor Stephanie Broden and Kelly Shackelford. I'm running in part to make sure that all those standards we just passed today, uh, uh, Thomas Ratliff has made a few statements to the effect that if they can get enough liberals and enough rhino swing votes, they will try to reopen the history and the science standards and roll back some of the fantastic work that was done at such great cost to our conservatives. I'm running because I know that I will not back down. I have no vested interest in this position. I have no interest in being a politician and I'm not interested in being a career politician. I am running exclusively to protect those standards and to ensure the upcoming standards are every bit as rigorous. Okay. Um, you may have answered it just now by saying you are uh, not running this to be a politician. Um, I am a nurse, but I am a passionate educator, and I pursued a degree in education because it gave me credibility. And your card says that you are a perennial student, and I've heard things about how brilliant you really are. And so I wondered why you haven't pursued Phoenix University or one of those so that you would have the credibility. I didn't want it bad enough. I've been able to attain credibility by producing results. I broke into the IT industry about 20 years ago. And I had been a secretary and a reporting supervisor, and I went to agency after agency. And finally once they Gail, God, I'd love to get you a job, but you don't have any training, and you don't have any experience. I said, that's okay. Someone out there needs a technical writer, and I'm cheaper. Sure enough, I got a technical writing job. With that one under my belt, I had the experience. And from there on, I went to Texas Instruments. And while working there, they had a little database that needed to be fixed. I said, oh, that's a mess. I had been taking night classes, but not degree-oriented. It was hard, intense, technical courses to build up skill really fast. I said, sure, Gail, knock yourself out. So after a couple years there, then I had programming experience. And I went on to ExxonMobil and completed the first project that I did for them, my first formal programming job in a computer language I had never heard of before. I got hired because I was the only one in the interview who said I didn't know the language. It was brand new, nobody knew it, and the interviewer knew that. So I got that job just for being honest, and I completed the job two weeks late and $5,000 under a budget. And when you can produce results in America, that's what it's all about. And that's all I'm asking for from teachers. I don't care how bright they are. I don't care about their bright ideas and their theories. I want to see results. I've, I've made my career by producing results in fact, by doing things that often the experts said couldn't be done. I didn't know enough to know it wasn't possible, so I figured out a way. All right, thank and you. And I can do that as well for you. Thanks. I happen to believe very strongly in education and getting um, and if you're going to be in education, uh, you need to have a, an, 
a college degree, and if you can go to the master's level, absolutely. I was so inspired, you all, by working in the reading laboratory at Scottish Rite Hospital under Dr. Lucius Waite, you all, that I chose to go back to get my master's, okay? And I was, I loved every minute of it. And I, and then in turn, was able to take that talent and get on the State Board of Education and make a difference for kids, you all. Uh, my father grew up in the Great Depression and lost everything overnight. He didn't have the opportunity to have a, a, a college education. He didn't have the money, you all. He went on to World War I, but he came back. And he had just gotten married, started having kids, and the Great Depression hit and he lost everything. And he had a pretty good position at that time. Uh, uh, Vice President of the wholesale furniture manufacturing, the largest in the South. Okay, he picked himself up because he was a devout uh, a Christian, uh, believed in work, the work ethic. He was brought up like that, honest as the day is long. And he put, picked himself up and put himself back in the race of life, you all. Raised three girls, and the mantra that he gave me as I grew up, Tynesy, you can lose all this overnight, but you can never lose what you learn here. You will always be able to get a job. Get your education, honey. Get your education. And he lived long enough to see his three girls get a college degree. That is why I believe strongly in getting, having a college degree and, and, and higher up. Thank you. Uh, so what's your opponent going to look like in November for the election? Do you know who's going to Lois be running Perrin. on the Democratic side of the ticket? Lois Perry. All right. Can you uh, tell us some of the key differences or concerns that we would tell our neighbors about whenever we go out and talk to independents and say, well, vote for the Republican or for the Democrat? Well, I, I really, uh, I really only met uh, Lois Parrott once. Uh, she has been on the Dallas Independent School District, her, her husband has, and they're incredibly liberal, I do know that, very, very liberal. She would be the kind that would believe in the comp, that uh, national uh, curriculum that Obama is trying to uh, make all the states get onto, you know, to take on, it's called the core curriculum. She would be that type, okay, of, of person, okay. She will look toward the teacher uh, organizations that act like their unions, and she will, they will influence her over her opinion, okay? So she will be looking at what I call the very opposite of what you and I believe in or would do, okay? Uh, so that, that would be my, okay. my concern uh, about that. Okay. In fact, Lois Parrott has a PhD and that explains it. <laughs> I am a mere member of Mensa. Um, I met Lois Parrott, I liked her very much, and, and I did some research on her. And I was very pleased to see, to be perfectly honest, the media didn't like her. Because <laughs> so I thought she can't be all bad. She's not as good as a Republican. But as Democrats go, if the media didn't like her, there's got to be something good about her. Uh, she, she's a lovely woman. Um, I, I was pleased to have the opportunity to speak with her at a, at a candidate event. But the fact is, she will vote with the liberals. Um, she's, we need to restore sound, fundamental, American, solid values. And the academicians have always looked down upon us with contempt. And it's time for us to stand up and say, Go ahead. I'm going to vote this way anyway. It's for. It's not just for our children. It's for the future of the nation. It's all well and good to say, oh, we have to make the children happy. We have to make them feel good. Blah blah blah. Childhood used to be a trial. Used to be a challenge. People used to have to live up, live up to it. The uh, children used to have to work hard. And we've been so busy making sure that their whole life was a vacation that they don't want to grow up. They want to live in mommy's basement forever and, and be on mommy's insurance program. No, that's not good for kids. 
But the academicians don't know that. And that's why, when you hire an electrician, do you have to know how to do his job in order to give him direction? Does he come in and tell you what to do in your house? No, you tell him. When you go to a doctor, he does what you tell him to do. And on the State Board of Education, it's our time to tell the educators the job that we want them to do. Okay. That's what I'll do. Thank you.